All right, welcome back to the One Bar and Lumpagish Show. I am One Bar, and it's time to whip out those measuring sticks. It is tail to tape where we dissect the Vikings and Cowboys position by position to see who comes out on top. Yeah, I think I think your rulers and centimeters. Mine is a meaty yardstick. We're gonna whip them out, see which team is longer when it comes to the Cowboys and the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, and uh, you know. The Cowboys are kind of shit this year, so we're not being biased. We're just being truthful. They are. They've had some very key injuries, and so have we. So, uh, you know what? We're in the same damn boat there. And let's hop right into it. Let's start at the quarterback position. Dak Prescott had that horrifying broken leg that still keeps me up at night when I picture it. Uh, but they have the a red rifle in Andy Dalton. Uh, behind him is Garrett Gilbert, who actually looked pretty damn good last week. And don't forget, everybody's pizza slinger, Ben DiNucci. Ben DiNucci. Uh, yeah. Um, Gilbert actually didn't look horrible. But the Red Rocket is, uh, It's. I mean, the Vikings come out on top here. We don't even have to argue this one very long. They're down to their backup. Uh, I mean, what was it, two weeks ago? Was it DiNucci or whatever the hell his name is? DiNucci. Uh, Kirk Cousins Dinucci. trumps him. Sorry. Nucci. Uh, yeah, this is uh, it's not even close. Kirk Cousins, even as the game manager he has become, is far and beyond what the Cowboys have on the field and on their roster right now. Let's move to a running back where the Cowboys have a stud running back of their own named Ezekiel James Elliott. Uh, behind him is Tony Pollard, and that's all you got to talk about. This is a good one. Is that really punch. his middle name, or did you guess? I have no idea. Well, that sounds good. Yeah, say it with confidence. Who are you taking here, Delvin Cook? And Alexander Madison or Zeke and Tony Jerdall Pollard. Wow. Uh, yeah, I mean, Zeke Zeke has uh, is averaging 3.8 yards a carry. Zeke is still one of the best uh, with his offensive line, so riddled with injuries. Their passing game going to shit. Got to give him a pass on his numbers. But the fact is, this year, Dalvin Cook is much, much more effective, much scarier. And he is, I say, the best running back in this league. So, Absolutely, Dalvin Cook and the Vikings trump Mr. Zeke. I agree. I agree. And right now, the Vikings are just smoking the Cowboys in the length category. Uh, let's move over to wide receiver. Yeah. Uh, Dallas Cowboys, Mari Cooper, Michael Gallup, and that delicious rookie, C.D. Lamb. And we also should probably mention Cedric Wilson, who's had a few good games this year, too. So uh, three strong with a fourth who's not too shabby against the Minnesota Vikings, Jefferson, Thielen, and Chad Beebe. Did you mention Michael Gallup? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, yeah, the, the Cowboys have some very, very good wide receivers. Um, this is a tough one. I'm, I, I have my answer, but I, I, I've, I've gone first every time. You Go ahead. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with, with the Cowboys here. I, you know, I, you can argue who is the best wide receiver out of this group, uh, but I don't think you can argue that the Cowboys are deeper. So for that reason alone, I'm going with the Cowboys. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm going Dallas too. They are they are deeper, absolutely. And even at the top, when it comes to just their big guns, I think it's pretty damn even. So uh, Dallas gets it with Mr. Gallup and Cedric Wilson adding that beautiful depth. Yeah, a couple of nice pieces there. And and, uh, and moving on the old line, let's go to tight ends first. Uh, my boy Dalton Schultz. If you remember a couple of years ago in the draft, I uh, had quite the man crush on this guy, Blake Bell, the former Viking is on the roster as well. Former Viking, great. Get it right. Sorry. Sorry about that. Against, uh, you know, uh, Kyle Rudolph. Irv Smith comes back this week. Sounds like he's uh, ready to go. And um, your boy, Tyler Conkadonk. Conkadonk. Uh, Dallas Schultz is actually a, not not too bad of a player. Um, but I'm uh, I'm going I'm going Vikings. Uh, that's yeah. it. I mean, it's easy, really. <laughs> I'm trying to, trying to think of something good to say about the – the Cowboys tight ends, but uh, the Vikings, Kyle Rudolph, and and Irv and Konkadonk. It's it's not close. I'm sorry. You're correct. Uh, you're right. Is who is their starter? It's not Dalton Schultz. It's uh, Schultz. No, I know, but the other guy who's hurt. Uh, what the hell is his name? Ah. He must okay. not be very good if you can't remember it. It's Blake uh, Jarwin. Blake Jarwin. Yeah, he's kind. He was kind of starting to come on, but he's out. So anyway. All right, the old line. This is what I kind of want to talk about here because in most uh, most years, the, way, the Cowboys have had uh, one of the best old lines in football. But right now, they have Cameron Irvin, Connor Williams, Tyler Bayadash, Zach Martin, 
And if you uh, watch Schooling with the Enemy yet, you'll hear how uh, Jay Tuck feels about this next guy, Terrence Steele. And let me just give you a little spoiler. It ain't good. Terrence Steele. He's got a great name. He's just not very good. And and they're they're okay when it comes to pass blocking, I think. But the run run def- run run blocking is is dismal. It is very very gross. Obviously, Zach Martin's the big boy. They got some injuries along this offensive line. Um, they had what's his nuts retire last year, Fredericks, right? Uh, so it's, it's, it's tough to watch. It's painful. And, and even though the Vikings offensive line isn't overly great, they are coming on. So I do give this one to the, uh, to the Vikings. I mean, when you look at their, their ratings and what they're rating as far as steel and Irving, it's, it's nasty. It's gross. Uh, yeah. Um, this goes to the Vikings as that unit is starting to gel. It's becoming a bit of a strength, um, Held up pretty well against the Bears' front seven, giving Kirk Cousins time and uh, not opening a ton of holes for Delvin Cook, but he grounded his way to almost 100 yards. So, um, again, uh, Vikings line a little bit healthier, a little bit better at this point. So, uh, Vikings win another one. Yeah, I fully expect that defensive line of the Vikings to uh, penetrate this offensive line come Sunday. Oof, oof. All right, let's go on the defense. The defensive line of the Cowboys looks a little like this. Demarcus Lawrence. Neville Gallimore, Antoine Woods, Tyrone Crawford, and the resurgent Alden Smith. And we should also probably throw in Randy Gregory in there as well. So um, not a bad D-line from the Cowboys. Yeah, they got some They got some names, that's for sure. Um, when it comes to the Cowboys' defense overall, they're, they're not good, um, kind of all around. They got some good pieces, but they've been uh, – that's been their Achilles heel for sure. Uh Defensive line wise, um, they got Lawrence, which is fantastic. I don't know who you got. Uh, well, I was hoping you go first. Well, I'll go first. I, I, I give this one. Mm, I give this one to the Vikings, but it's damn, damn close. Um, it's close, and Demarcus Lawrence is probably not fair to the Cowboys that we're giving us the Vikings, but I just think overall. Through and through, we're better. I think we're playing better right now. Alden Smith is having a nice season, which is very surprising. But if I had to pick, I'm I'm, I'm taking the Vikings. Hercules Mataaf has been been piping hot. Yeah, I also think it's close, but I'm actually going to give it to the uh, Cowboys here. I think it's just from the talent standpoint and the doing it longer. Uh, you got Tyrone Crawford, Alden Smith, Marcus Lawrence. Those guys have uh, played well in the league before, and I think the Vikings. D line right now is just starting to come on, starting to figure out. You got DJ Wanham starting to figure it out. Hercules Mataafa has been coming on. And, you know, we saw a little bit from Odenable last week. And Jalen Holmes has actually done okay this year, too. So I feel like if this game was maybe two or three weeks down the road, I would go with the Vikings uh, if they continue to grow the way they are. But right now, I'm going to go with the Cowboys. Yeah, if this was purely um, looking at just pass rush, I'd go with the Cowboys. But the Cowboys can't stop shit on the ground giving up 157 yards a game on the ground. Um, so their their bread and butter is definitely trying to get to the quarterback, but they can't stop the run. All right, let's move on to linebackers. Uh, Leighton Van Der Esch was hurt earlier, but he is back. Jalon Smith. Um, also still got Sean Lee, who I'm surprised is still in the league. Joe Thomas was once a good player, but uh, those are basically the top four there um, against you know Kendricks, Troy Dye, and Eric Wilson. Yeah, Cowboys have a, a good group, and Sean Lee is actually having a very, very good season. Um, Van Der Esch, guy who can middle linebacker and get in, get after that quarterback. All, all three of these guys are pretty good against the pass. That's that's uh, where they shine. Um, so I'm I'm actually going to give this to the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, um, I can see why you do that, but I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with the Vikings. Eric Wilson's been on fire lately. Eric Kendricks is one of the best, if not the best, middle linebacker in the NFL. Doesn't get enough credit, uh, in my opinion. So, uh, Vikings are top heavy here. You could argue that the Cowboys are deeper, but I'm going to go with the Vikings on this one. Yeah, Both. as long as the Cowboys, as long as these guys who have all had injury issues can stay healthy, they're that's a pretty damn good trio. It is. It is. It's probably the best trio since Wilson Phillips. Wilson Phillips, that was only a duo, wasn't it? Oh, wasn't there a third one in there? Uh, maybe they had a drummer, a flutist. Well, the one the one was the size of two, so maybe that's what I'm thinking. That's not All right, polite. let's move on. I know. Let's move on to the cornerbacks. We've got Anthony Brown. That's just through the whole damn secondary. Xavier Woods, safety. Donovan Wilson, safety, whoever the hell that is. Uh, Shadobi Awuze, uh, corner, who's actually a pretty damn good player. And Jordan Lewis, 
Uh, and they have another Viking here on the depth chart. I didn't notice, but they got Stephen Parker, our preseason sensation. Stephen Parker, the surprise cut. I'm, I still have not slept since they cut him. I thought he was going to be fantastic. And and Diggs, they're, they're rookie. They're stud rookies on the IR, so that, that definitely hurts them. Yeah, is that why you're so pale? Because you haven't slept since uh, Stephen Parker was cut? No, unfortunately, I'm just a ginger. Oh, Comes right. with the territory. All right, so who are you taking here? What secondary uh, do you want? What beleaguered secondary? I don't know. It's – it's uh, it, I'm going Viking strictly because of the safeties. We've done this before. It's kind of a cop out, but our safeties are so much better than theirs. Our cornerbacks, I think, are kind of a wash. Um, even though I'm I'm way too excited about how our cornerbacks have been playing, but uh, I am going with the Minnesota Vikings just because if if Trevon Diggs was healthy, it'd be a little closer. But uh, Gladney's getting better. I mean, they're just looking tight as hell out there. So Vikings get her. Yeah, I agree. I you know you got. You got Harrison Smith, who's coming off his best game of the year. Uh, Anthony Harris, and Jeff Gladney improving. And I, I like the way Chris Boyd's played, and I like Chris Jones. So um, the Vikings kind of D-line. They're starting to uh, – the corners are starting to gel here. So uh, this is the Vikings. And um, at this point, I don't even think it's that close. So um, let's move on to special teams. And I think we're all – I don't care who the Cowboys have. I'm going with the other team right now. You cannot pick the Vikings special teams right now. Can't. It's not fair. It's not nice. But I will say it's the Cowboys special teams doesn't appear to be that great either. Their punter, when you just look strictly at his numbers, averaging 42 yards a punt, only five with inside the 20. Zerline is Zerline. He's always got that big meaty hog of a leg. And Tony Pollard is a return guy who um, doesn't appear to offer much as a return man. But yes, got to go Cowboys. Doesn't matter who it is. We're a mess. We're a mess. I didn't know. I didn't know you had it up. I was going to actually make a bet with you that I would do a show completely naked if you could name it their punter. Well, I just did. So next show, you're going to be buck ass nude, and we will lose right. every subscriber we've ever had. I think we'll gain at least one. All right. Um, yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I wasn't keeping score. I tend to. I tend not to do that. But uh, I'm pretty sure the Vikings dominated this uh, this tail of tape. They did. To the Cowboys' credit, they have some serious injuries going on so any other year probably would have been a little bit closer but uh we got default to the vikings on these and and the records cowboys are two and seven so it's for a reason they're not they're not an overly great team yeah yeah we won't get too much in that we got we got talking that in our preview video which will be happening tonight i don't know when it's going to air but we uh, definitely be doing that very excited about that As beer in know, hand uh multiple beers in hand hell yeah uh all right until then, you're something to, to tide you over. An octopus, if it's hungry enough, will eat its own arms. <laughs>